Now, last week, we created a build around the Retrace Path Legendary Trace Fire form on our Warlock, and that did extremely well for the views we achieved. So, how about we do another one, but this time for the Titan, and with the new Golden Tricon perk? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I have finally gotten the God War version that everyone has been clamoring on about, and now I can fully use it with this devilishly powerful Sir Titan build that will knock you off your feet. This thing will melt through champions like Superman's Heatray, and anyone caught within this path will also suffer the same effect. Get your sunscreens out, as things are about to get really hot in here. So, like the usual, if you enjoyed the video, then do leave a like and sub, as it does go a long way for me. Starting off with the subclass, we will be using the Code of Seedbreaker for the full use of Sol Invictus, Sun Warrior, and the Super, which will all help the build spread its effects. The subclass, being a melting point of ability regen, will help with sustaining our constant damage and ability to activate the Golden Tricon secondary effect. The Golden Tricon offers us a 15% weapon buff the moment you use and kill a combatant with this, which refreshes per kill made. This perk can then increase its damage to 50% some more if we manage to land an ability kill while having this weapon out, and this will increase our damage from 15 to 50% for a few seconds. I think of it like a booster on an already good perk. Ideally, we will want to pair this up with the Path of the Burning Steps so we can gain its increased damage buff as we go along and net kills with it, and then with the help of Font of Might, we can then become invincible-ish in the process. In total, 50% damage from Golden Tricon, plus Path of the Burning Steps at max, which is a 35% buff, plus Font of Might for that sweet 20% buff, and you overall get a 105% solar weapon buff to your retraced path, which is absolutely breathtaking in this instance. However, to be a bit more real in the most hard content, you're probably going to be getting a 75% activation rate since this will rely on the tight perception of getting it right. This then leaves the abilities which you're going to be relying on as well to maintain your melee and your grenades. Sunspots via Sol Invictus and Sun Warrior, once active, will enhance your damage to inflict more damage and garner more ability energy. These two alone is going to be handy if we use our melee or grenades to achieve this as both abilities will see a lot of usage on and off. Since grenades will be used the most, it's also wise to add on the Ashes Axis mod so you can make full use of your super when the time comes, as that super is also very powerful against bosses and small environments. Handy, as you'll end up in these environments a lot once you get into the play of things. Now for the weaponry, it makes sense to have Retrace Path as our main secondary weapon, and the Galahorn with or without the Masterwork attached, so we can make use of the damage buffs from previously. This will then leave your primary, which is down to you, but ideally a weapon with Osmosis is the best choice to pick. For this part, we have gone with the Accurred Redemption Bow with Rangefinder and Rampage, which is ideal for taking out combatants for endgame content and those who have champions within them. Although any bow is fine, this bow is a precision frame, which means it's going to be doing a little bit more damage compared to all the other bows we have. This will help when combined with these sunspots, as we can stay in them and receive a 20% weapon buff, which will help along the way. On top of that, we then do have the Rampage perk, which will be escalated as we go along, and this can further help with having a continuous damage source when all other options are not available. However, if you feel that having a bow is not worth your while for the build, as you don't plan to use it in the game, then try and get a weapon with Osmosis on instead, so you can make full use of the solar damage being granted. The Traveler's Chosen with a full mass work would work out great with this build, since you're going to be relying on your abilities a lot to get that sweet bonus. The secondary is the Retrace Path Trace Rifle with Substance and Golden Tricon, and you do remember when I said that the weapon with the following roll is going to be the god roll you want. Well, here it is, in all its glory, and boy does it put in work. Our other role we had contained the Feeding Frenzy and One for All perk, which offers us some nice continuous damage the longer we fire the weapon, and although we had to auto-reload it, it still retained that power even after a few seconds of delay. Now we don't have to worry about reloading so much since this substance perk will be activating perk your mate. This weapon and the perks feel like an exotic in the making and it offers us a grand slam of damage that can be switched from one combatant to another. We can in some situation even outpace an overload champion's health regen when they're not stunned, which is impressive but also very risky to pull off. Like I said before, if you land either roll, be sure to lock them down and use it with any ability based builds in mind as they will utterly destroy things in seconds. 
For Heavy, I have the Galahorn, which is a returning weapon from D1, and it only makes perfect sense to equip it within the build. With its huge damage potential it can offer, you can easily take out a large group of combatants to even the boss in 1-2 to two shots. Font of Might and Power of Burning Steps will allow you to amplify your damage even more and simply disintegrate all who get caught up within its blast. To top it all off, we even have the weapon Masterwork, which offers the users even more damage from the rocket being fired. And honestly, we could keep going on and on, but that will lead to creating another build within the common build you have. Now for the stats, focus as much energy and effort into your discipline as this will be triggered the most in the build and then spare some energy left over into your intellect or strength stat. What we want to do is to make sure that we gain that 50% weapon buff as much as possible while also having this ability freely available as it passively cools down. For this, we do have the Elemental Well mods to help but these can only go so far in most content, especially the much harder content we may face. So in my example, I've aimed for a 70 in discipline but this can go all the way up to 100 if you have the stat distribution to do so. As we have sunspots available, we can utilise them to garner much faster regen and safety as we play and combine these with our passive stat and you can gain your grenades back within under a minute. Of course, we would want to have this back faster so attaching elemental ordnance will greatly help as this will produce wells as we use our grenades. From here we then have the powerful one mods for 2 worlds to be created instead of 1, orbs of restoration which will give us energy to the ability with the least amount of energy available, fire and ice which will give us both stasis and solar worlds upon defeating a champion and then restorative finisher which is basically a orbs of restoration in effect but done through a finished combatant instead. These should all be enough for you to gain back your abilities near instantly if done correctly. Which now leads us to our intellect at 50. No huge need to fully invest in this area as 1 to 2 Ashes Assets mod is all you need to survive. Plenty of grenades means plenty of energy being provided, which means plenty of supers being used non stop, and this can be very helpful when burning down mini bosses or blocking off entries that you know combatants will be pouring out from. We also have the Wyvern Heat mod to the mix for that 30% debuff applied via abilities, and you can burn down champions with it within a few hits. Very useful in GMs or even master content when coordinated well with your team. Alternatively, attaching your well opponency mod can vastly help with this build if you want to use a super more often, but this will of course all vastly depend. We are now left with a few mods that also have an effect on the build as we play. Element armaments will allow solo based weapons to create wells. Trace rifle reserves increases the amount of trace ammo you can keep. Forms of Might allows us to gain a 20% weapon buff from collecting the well that corresponds with the subclass we are using and Trace Rifle Scavenger allows us to gain bonus ammo when picking up special ammo. Now as we have covered the main topics of the setup we are using, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For Head we have Minor Intellect, Ashes Assets Times 2 and Bountiful Well mod. For Arm we have Resilience, Fastball and Elemental Ordnance mod. In chest we have Discipline, Cacus of Dampner, Trace Rifle Reserves and Elemental Armors mod. A leg with Orbs of Restoration, Trace Rifle Scavenger and Font of Might mod. Mark with Minor Discipline, Restorative Finisher, Withering Heat and Fire and Ice mod. As you can see, this build is nuts and is on par with the Battle Harmony version for the Warlock we did. It does a huge amount of consistent damage that just keeps escalating and the poor combatants that face us just get melted in the process one by one. You need to make sure that when you get the ball rolling that you make sure you focus your efforts on the small minor combatants first as this will allow you to build up your stacks and then once you get what you came for you can then use your abilities for that extra push and damage and then swap to the bigger and tougher combatants around. This is important as it will save you less rounds being wasted and as you can see your biggest disadvantage will be your ammo diminishing over time. This is why I'm generally using the bow within the build as with the damaging perks they are very swift, easy to use accurate and can keep tough combatants away while you pick them off. Because of this it has helped with getting special ammo much quicker compared to using anything else from my experience and generally it's a lot more safer. This also makes it useful in master content as well as you can stun overloads with them with ease, swap to your secondary to build up your stats quickly and then use that to take out the champion you are facing. That or you can always use your heavy which in our case will be one too short on that poor champion in the process. Now 100 to 70% damage buff is no joke and this can make running through master content a breeze when the cards are right. 
It's also easy to achieve that you can swap out a few mods and still retain the same effect that the builds aim for. It won't be strong enough to melt a boss's health in an instant for example, as the buff timeframes are very strict. But when pulled off, you can eat through their health just enough to make a difference. Like I said earlier, the only downside of the build to be aware of is the ammo economy, which burns out very quickly if not careful. Best thing to do here is to stock up on your scavenger and find the mods, as this weapon eats through ammo like there's no tomorrow. Overall, I'm not even going to tell you what to do next, as you already know what best to do from here, but honestly, do tell me if you find this video very helpful, and whether you like this weapon or not. So overall, if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all next one.